The English Electric Lightning was a British fighter plane that played a key role as an interceptor during the mid to late 20th century. Throughout this period, the United States and its allies were embroiled in geopolitical tension, a military, technological and nuclear arms race, and widespread espionage with the Soviet Union and Eastern Bloc nations, a standoff referred to as the Cold War. The United Kingdom was part of the Western Bloc, a member of NATO and a key partner with the USA during this time and subsequently. Designed and built by the English Electric Company Limited, the Lightning was conceived as an interceptor to defend the V-bomber airfields. The V-bombers, consisting of the Avro Vulcan, Vickers Valiant and Hanley Page Victor, were key components of the UK's nuclear and conventional arsenal, and in the 1950s and 60s constituted the strategic bombing wing of Britain's nuclear deterrent. This role would be taken over solely by the Royal Navy after 1968, using nuclear submarine-launched UGM-27 Polaris missiles. Nevertheless, the V-bomber bases at the time were key strategic targets for the Soviets in the event of a nuclear confrontation. It was expected that the Soviets would develop nuclear-armed supersonic bombers, and as such the essence of the Lightning's role was as a rapid-response interceptor to defend the airfields alongside the Bristol Bloodhound surface-to-air missile launchers. This two-pronged defence would allow the V-bombers time to get airborne and away with their own nuclear payload for a retaliatory attack on the Soviet Union and its allies. After 1953, the initial three prototypes of the Lightning were hand-built in Lancashire, and the type would undergo continued development through to 1958. The second prototype model, P-1B, successfully broke the Mach 2 barrier on 25th of November 1957. Although the Fairy Delta FD-2, another British development, broke the airspeed record the year before, the Lightning lacked the fuel capacity to make a robust challenge, as one run in each direction at maximum speed was required to achieve the record. Nevertheless, in early trials, the P-1B broke the 1,000 mile per hour barrier on a daily basis. To date, the Lightning is the only British designed and built aircraft capable of exceeding Mach 2. The first operational Lightning was designated F-1, and to meet the requirements of its role, primary focus was geared towards its rate of climb, acceleration and speed, although range was less of a concern in this capacity. Subsequent variants called F-1A and F-2 differed little from their forerunner, but the F-3 bucked this trend. The F-3 was the highest performance iteration of the Lightning up to that point, possessing higher thrust Rolls-Royce Avon 301R engines, a more squared off fin and a more robust inlet cone. This extra performance came at a cost in the form of greater fuel consumption, and this posed concerns for some air forces around the world, the lack of cannon armament as well being a point of contention. Attempts were made to address the fuel capacity issues with the addition of a fixed ventral 610 imperial gallon fuel tank, and the expansion of the leading edge fuel tank as an interim solution. The F-6 variant would be the definitive lightning for the RAF and made its maiden flight on 6th of June 1965. It differed little from the F-3A, save for the fact that it had two 260 imperial gallon fuel tanks mounted above the wings that could be jettisoned if necessary. The much sought after cannon armament returned, with two Aden guns installed on the ventral tank. The final British Lightning was the F-2A, it produced in 1966. This was essentially an F-2 version, with some minor upgrades, including the same ventral tank as the F-6. While it lacked the thrust of its successor variants, it had a larger range that would be used to good effect in low-level interceptions over West Germany. After 1963, English Electric was absorbed by the newly formed British Aircraft Corporation, that subsequently took all responsibility for Lightning production and design. The Lightning is well remembered for its natural metal exterior while in service with the RAF and the Royal Saudi Air Force. Its performance was exemplary by 1950s and 60s standards, and compares very favourably to even modern operational fighter examples. The Lightning had a unique engine configuration, with one engine stacked on top of the other. This reduced the frontal area and minimised airflow disruption and drag. Although this configuration allowed for the thrust of two engines to be accommodated, the likelihood of a fault in one engine affecting the other was also exacerbated. Full production aircraft were powered by the Rolls-Royce Avon engine, an axial flow jet engine, and the first of its type to be designed and made by the company. Multiple variants of this engine were used in the Lightning throughout its service life. Performance-wise, the Lightning was well situated to meet the needs of its interceptor role. Pilots referred to it as like being saddled to a skyrocket. It had an astounding rate of climb, possessing a constant climb rate of around 20,000 feet per minute, reaching 36,000 feet in less than three minutes. This optimum climb profile required the use of afterburner during takeoff. There are also reports that the Lightning could climb at 50,000 feet per minute in a zoom climb. It had a maximum range of 850 miles, a combat range of 155 miles, and a maximum speed of Mach 2.27.
By comparison, the Eurofighter Typhoon currently in service with the RAF has a maximum speed of Mach 2, a rate of climb of 62,000 feet per minute, thus demonstrating the impressive technological achievement for the time. The Lightning's official ceiling was kept secret, but it is thought that it was around 60,000 feet. In 1962, Fighter Command arranged a series of tests with the infamous Lockheed U-2 spy plane, a high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft. These trials suggested that the Lightning could intercept the U-2 at altitudes up to 65,000 feet. In 1984, during a large exercise, Flight Lieutenant Mike Hale intercepted a U-2 at an altitude thought previously unattainable. Around 66,000 feet, the U-2 was thought to be impregnable. Hale reportedly also climbed to an altitude of 88,000 feet using a zoom climb manoeuvre and also stated that the Lightning easily bested the Lockheed F-104 Starfighter in time to height and acceleration trials. Also in the mid-80s, British Airways trials pitted the Concorde against a range of contemporary NATO fighters such as the F-15 Eagle, F-16 Fighting Falcon, F-14 Tomcat, Dassault Mirage and F-104 Starfighter, yet the Lightning piloted once again by Mike Hale, was the only one to overtake the Concorde on a stern conversion intercept. For combat, the Lightning F-1 was equipped with a nose-mounted twin 30mm Aden cannon, two de Havilland Firestreak missiles, VHF radio and Ferranti AI-23 air pass radar. This loadout changed during the Lightning service life as refinements and modifications were made. The Firestreak missiles were first-generation passive infrared homing air-to-air -air missiles that tracked the heat signature from an enemy jet's exhaust. They were the first missiles of their type to enter service with the Royal Air Force and Fleet Air Arm. Later versions of the Lightning carried the Hawker Siddeley Red Top missile. The Red Top had around twice the range, a larger warhead and greater tracking capability than the Firestreak. In terms of service history, the Lightning in its various forms saw service not just in the UK, but in the Kuwait Air Force and Royal Saudi Air Force as well. Its single kill was a British Harrier, whereby the pilot was forced to eject due to apparent engine failure, but the aircraft continued to fly towards the East German border. It was shot down to prevent the aircraft falling into enemy hands. Of all variants and prototype Lightnings, 337 aircraft were built in total. As of 2020, only three aircraft were still airworthy. Although a naval variant was proposed, the Sea Lightning, this never came to fruition. Given its firepower and range shortcomings, the Lightning was phased out between 1974 and 1988, being directly replaced by the Panavia Tornado F3, an aircraft we will explore again on this channel. Lightning pilot John Ward perfectly sums up the impact of the Lightning and the way it carried out its interceptor role. Quote, Suddenly the telephone would ring and it would be one of the radar controllers from around the UK, ordering you to scramble immediately and so you would run to the aeroplane, jump in. They, the Soviet aircraft, were just monitoring, listening and recording everything that went on. So you would get up alongside and normally they would wave. Quite often there would be a little white face at every window. They knew we were there just to watch them. One I intercepted when he violated the airspace and I was trying to get him to land, but it was scary. He just wanted to get out of there. He was out of dodge as fast as he could go. He didn't want to mix it with me. Today, the Lightning is one of the most revered and cherished British fighter aircraft with numerous examples preserved and on display around the world. Indeed, there are several versions on display around the UK at aerodromes, museums and airfields. Even as recently as 2009, three Lightnings were kept flying at Thunder City in Cape Town, South Africa. Thunder City is renowned for operating the largest private collection of former military jet aircraft anywhere in the world. The Lightning harks back to a time of Cold War competition, unremitting noise and speed, but also innovation. It is certainly worthy of its place in aeronautical engineering history. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode of Scorch the Sky.